Okay, <clears throat> alrighty, let's see what we got here, <clears throat> hey, put a one in the chat if you can see both the audio and you can hear my voice, just put a one please, <clears throat> how everybody doing? Alright. Let me prepare some more things. Let me 
pull up this chat too. Okay, cool. That's all I wanted to um Hey, what's up, Sharon? What's up, huh? <clears throat> hey, how you doing so here? Hope all is well. Hey, what's up, J Mac? How you doing? That's cool, that's cool. Alright. We do this. Bring this. Bring this out. Alright, cool. Hey D Johnson, how you doing? What's up to Dow? How you doing, man? Alright, cool, cool, cool. Alright, so today, um, hopefully this won't be a long stream, but this is going to be showing off the Roku Streaming Stick Plus. Uh, I did a video of it earlier this week. I sort of um, showed my setup, did like a quick unboxing of it, <clears throat> and um, quickly showed it how to put it together, and then I made my demonstration on the device. Hey Asha, how are you? So, in this live stream, we're going to be going over different streaming apps that you can put on this device, in which I haven't seen too many people in the community talk about, just as an option. And also, we're going to be going over the servers. Um, it's flexible, too. I know that a lot of people are not excited about Roku, but at the end of the day, you can watch the same content on this device as you can on any other device. It's a budget device. It's small, it's portable, and overall, it's very nice in terms of the integration and the UI. Everything just fits um, whenever I think of this device and see it. It has a nice ecosystem. Uh, that's my point that I'm getting at. <clears throat> so without further ado I'm going to get into it so as you can see here um, for those of you that have seen my Roku video this looks mighty familiar this is the home screen of the Roku so the channels that I have is a total of, of 19 I got Plex, MB, Jellyfan, 2B Prime Video Zumo, got Pluto, Funimation, got Fossum, Film Rise, and 4K Spotlight. Just for some extras that I wanted to see. Generally speaking, um, on this device, once you get your setup, it's very straightforward. So I'm going to show you guys how to get some of the apps. You're going to want to just head to streaming channels click into it one time and then you see this pop-up menu this is the Roku channel store this has the feature applications the new and updated recommended top free movies and TV and they have a whole lot of genres to the side in which you can explore your device and you can add channels um, to this I think it's pretty unique the kids and family one is all right you got kids you will love this section definitely so generally speaking um, how I got most of my apps was I just went through the top three movies and TV got you know got my two big Zumo film rise and I'm going to show off some applications that you can cut the cord with in which um, they are free and they do have advertisements. But that's where I'm going to also show you guys um, the media server applications. And with the media server applications, um, you're going to get an ad-free experience and it's your own content. Plus... Um, I'm going to briefly talk about how you can add your premium service or aka IPTV onto the Roku without smarters. Yes, you can add your premium service onto the Roku without side loading, jailbreaking, going to the dark store. You can do that on the Roku through one app. 
So when it comes to watching content, this device does the exact same thing as the other devices. Is it limited? Yes. But can you get all the content that you can on other devices? Yes, you can. There's a way to do it. And I found it out. All right. So before we get into that, I'm going to go to home. So first app I want to highlight is Retro Crush. So I'm going to show you guys how to get that. Streaming channels. Go to search. And you type in Retro. Okay, so you can see it's, it's populated as I'm typing. So once you go to it, you click into it like that, and you can pretty much rate it. So I'm going to go into it. This is a legal application. Just so you are aware, if you have um, teenagers or children that are interested in Asian content or Japanese animated stuff, or if you want to watch something new or different, if you want a different application to put on your devices, if you're going the free route, check this out. OK, if you're going free, some people put pay free. You know, they have different combinations of how they want to do it. This is called Retro Crush. All right. So it's a very nice layout. It gives you a spotlight. Um, the spotlight is just highlighting some of the. TV shows and films are in this application. Of course, you're going to have a new arrival section, which is here, which is pretty nice. And this is a channel available on the Roku. This is also available on the Google Play Store. But the point I'm trying to make is that some of the more mainstream applications can also be found on Roku as well. It's not as limited as people think it is. And I want to get into that later on in the video. Trending now. I did it like a sort of preview of Great Teacher Onizuka. They got the dub version of the show on the application. And these are free things that you can watch with advertisement. But it's free, guys. And this is something that you can put on your device, specifically the Roku. Midnight Classics. I mean, uh... You can discover tons of shows in which you never imagined of seeing. You might want to check them out. You might like something in here. Or if you don't like anything about this, you know someone that does. And this is always a option for your clients or even your family and friends. You know, some people don't um, sell their devices. They just keep it within their family and their friends. And they provide a free service to their loved ones. This can be an app you can put on there. So everybody know about Tubi, right? But not too many people is talking about Retro Crush. Retro Crush actually has a YouTube channel as well in which they promote their um, classic shows and they just upload sometimes full episodes, but oftentimes clips of what they are going to release on their platform. So if I push the menu button, and um, Retro Crush, it brings up the login slash register, give me my home. I can remove advertisements. So when I click on removing of advertisements, you do say, well, you do see that you can upgrade to an ad free experience. <clears throat> so you can do the monthly or the yearly, that's just an option, or you can cancel that. You can browse the genre, you can search, but very nice drama, comedy, romance. It, it got a little bit of everything in here. Fantasy, horror, A to Z, psychological, supernatural, and that's pretty much the application. Matter of fact, um, it's just how many of you knew about Retro Crust um, before I did this live show? I'd be curious to know. It's just an application that I found out about sometime last year because I subscribed to their YouTube channel. And um, ever since then, it's, it's been on my, you know, my radar in terms of, OK, like maybe this is worth demonstrating or showing off just to give people a different option. 
Hey, what's up, Biggs? Yeah, this is Retro Crush. Like, uh, this is on a Roku. Just, uh, just so you know, I'm just, um, I'm just gonna lay it all out in this video. Um, this is a nice option. Rather, if you're selling it or you're just providing a free service to your family and your friends, okay? So I'm going to back out of this application and I'm going to go <clears throat> into my next channel. So you guys get the idea of searching for your channels and looking through the side menus as far as getting your content, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my home, which is here. And there is something called Asian Crush, but a lot of people don't know that on Crunchyroll, you can watch free content as well without signing up. I'm going to go into that because two years ago, this application wasn't worth mentioning because the interface was terrible, but they upgraded it. And then after that, I'm going to get down to the server apps and you guys see my setup. The same content that I'm watching on my shield, I can watch on this device. I'm going to go into Crunchyroll now for this next um, showing. And if you guys in here smack that like button, it is free. This is Crunchyroll. Now, I'm not going to play anything uh, for copyright reasons and YouTube reasons, but listen. If you are in to this, this is another option. I know these are not the applications most core cutters or streamers or hustlers put on their devices, but maybe you should think about more options for your clientele. I'm just giving options. Um, of course, we know about 2B. We know about the third party APKs that um, I'm not going to mention um, currently, but let's talk about some of the mainstream legal options as well i mean let's not forget about those they're stable nine times out of ten you know they're going to work and hey it's just another option now if you're going the free route consider this and it's tons of categories in this uh see i'm just scrolling through it's almost endless So as you can see here, um, there's plenty of streaming options, um, especially during this pandemic. I understand that not a lot of people have the funds to subscribe to a multitude of streaming services, which is why, which is one of the reasons why I'm doing this video, of course. Um, this is just show the end user options and what they can do. As you can see, you can log in and create an account. Uh, you can browse. There's a history attached to this. There's a watch list. Think of your watch list like your queue of what you want to watch home. And then there's a search. This UI looks a hell of a lot better than what it was two years ago. This is a huge update because before the um, the, the Android version of Crunchyroll had the better um, UI. Now the Roku has it matched. Or has a better UI at that. So I'm just glad to see the progression of the Roku platform. And this is a solid budget device. Now listen. <clears throat> I understand that this isn't preferred. But trust me. I'm going to get into it. Why it's a beast. So I'm going to back out now. I'm going to exit Crunchyroll. OK. All right. So we'll get to Midnight Pulp and stir maybe a little bit later and in, uh, in the live show. OK. If you've seen my channel before, you know that I'm talking about the server applications uh, live stream. I did do a sort of demonstration on how to get JellyCon in the K application. And that's another way for you to have a home theater like experience with full flexibility um, to your device. Now, in the past, there has been a topic that came up with the Roku platform about putting a premium service with 
the smartest application. I do not have to do that. I use one application and that one application is called MB. Now for all my hustlers out there and for people that want to take some notes, pay attention. MB is an all in one solution on the Roku platform. And I'm going to tell you why. There's also Jellyfin as well, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into Jellyfin as to why now after doing some testing, I'm going to have to slide a little bit off of it, but I'm going to get into MB. <clears throat> so I'm going to click into my MB. Okay. And I set up my server last night. I only have movies on here. Um, you know, and as far as getting the content, uh, I will not display that on this platform. You will have to email me in order to get some knowledge about that. Sharon did put my email in the live chat. Take a screenshot of it, write it down, get in contact with me because I'm about to say something that nobody has mentioned before on this platform as far as to my knowledge as far as in this community okay so you see there's a live TV here now I'm not gonna go into the live TV so MB is locked behind the paywall meaning you need a MB Premier license in order to unlock some of the features that MB has I'm just gonna put it out there you get an M3U now However, you get the M3U, it's, it's, it's totally on you. I'm just giving you the game right now. You get an M3U, you find a decent TV guide with the subscription, and this can be an all in one. This is nice for clients because you can set them up, meaning you give them a final quote. You rather, um, the server is a mini PC a Raspberry Pi, you can get something that can use MB as a server and then you can have an all-in-one experience on the Roku without jailbreaking, without sideloading, without accessing some hidden store, you know, there's no need for that. It's already on the device. You don't need the Smarters app to get premium service. And let me tell you something, this live TV, depending on, I guess, uh, the service, it takes a bit to come up, but it plays. I tested it out earlier and it, it's smooth too, smooth as it can be. And this is on the Roku on MB. Okay. So I'm going to go to the settings here. So with the display, um, you have display language that's based on device setting. I'm, I'm just going to put English. Okay, that must be a bit of a hiccup there. Oh, well, time format. I got the, you know, 12 hours, a.m., p.m. I have enable backdrops on. That's optional. Enhanced home screen. Let me turn that. Uh, Nah, I don't want to exit the app. I'll do that later. You can customize your home screen here. I like how mine look. So basically, in the playback, oh wow, that's going on. Um, the video quality, I have it on default. So whatever the highest bit rate of the file that I'm trying to play on my server, it's going to try to direct stream or direct play that content. And hey, what's up, Tim? How you doing, man? It's going to try to do a direct play of that stuff. Cinema intros. Uh, and, and this is another feature that is uh, with MB Premiere. So it's going to give you a theater like experience where you can use intros or custom trailers before you watch your movie. This is optional. Um, I like to get into my content, so I have it set to no. Play next episode automatically. I like to binge watching experience, so yes. 
you can burn in SSA subtitles. So for those of you that like to watch foreign content, for example, like anime, you can burn it into MB, but transcoding may occur on the server. I have that currently set to no. Audio and subtitle settings. Um, to adjust these, um, you can just use the, the web app or the server app. And then let me go back into here. <clears throat> and this is what I like. The neighbor, are you still watching? I have my set to know. So if you really want to binge watch something without every three episodes of giving you a pop up, are you still watching? You can get that experience. Before, if, if I wanted to get that experience, um, what I did was I went into the K application and when I went to my TV series, I brought up the on the option menu and put play from here. And that's how I got it in the K app. But on MB, you can do it by saying no in this setup. So that is pretty cool. Um, pretty nice. You can enable theme songs. Um, of course, the theme playback is um, not as integrated as it is in Plex. I think Plex does that the best. I, and I don't think nobody is going to beat Plex when it comes to theme songs of TV shows. I, I think currently Plex has that on lock. Until I see something different, <laughs> I'm going to just give that one to Plex. Um, convert multi-channel AAC FLAC. So I have my set to yes. If, if you have the proper equipment, um, it's going to convert these formats into Adobe for a full surround sound. Just for uh, those who are wondering. OK, then you have the advanced stuff, which is just remember me so I don't have to log back into the server and I don't want debugging because I don't care about it. If I want to um, tell the MB devs about an issue about their application or their server, I will contact them directly on Reddit or through their forums. I don't care for debug options, um, just not needed. And, you know, you have your select server, you have your sign out and your reset settings. The Roku app for MB is, uh, you know, it, it stripped down some of the settings that's on the native Android TV OS application. It's just simplistic. Uh, it gets right to the point. As you can see, the uh, this live TV, as you can see, it will say things that are on now. So this is actually live um, in this specific time zone. And I have my premium service integrated into MB on the Roku, meaning the same content that you watch on your Android boxes, you can watch on the Roku. And I'm going to keep saying that because when it comes down to it, since there's so many different options, for streaming content that you can actually control nowadays it don't matter what device you have as long as you have a tight network and you know what you're doing and you do your research yes you can cut the cord 100% with the Roku and you can watch the same content same content do you prefer What's up, Soul, bro? Do you prefer MB on Fire Stick, Android, or Roku? Um, I prefer MB on um the, the actually the K application. If if you catch my drip, so bro. Now this is a nice front end solution. Um, everyone in the chat, I did some testing on MB on the Roku earlier today, and I was getting direct plays on like these eight to ten gig files on the Wi-Fi, direct streams. Um, it, it hardly transcodes the audio. It's it's real nice. Um, the the back end, the development, the support of MB, it's the stability that I'm looking at. I'm not looking at the platform. I'm looking at the development of the software. That's what people are not talking about. This is nice. If you want to stick with Roku, this is going to be one of your favorite applications because you control it. 
you control it. And for anybody that's interested in getting their live TV onto the Roku without Smarters, okay, I'm going to say that again, without Smarters, and you want to have an all-in-one home theater-like experience, hit me up in email. I can't show the goods off on YouTube because YouTube is acting crazy right now. But if you email me, I'm telling you, it will change your mind about the Roku. And some of you are going to start selling these. Now, there's uh, one individual in the chat <laughs> that I know that dealt with Roku's in the past. And, um, hey, it's, uh, it's nice. So I'm going to go to my, uh, oh, no, dang, I, I, I don't want to go into the channels. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. All right. Let's go into Envy. Back into Envy. Y'all know how it is. All right. I'm going to hit movies. And I'm just going to show you guys how to navigate. It has a, a very clean interface. It reminds me of uh, Netflix, actually. How when you see Netflix UI. In today's time, it has sort of like that picture or that trailer playing up top. It gives you nice text for the description, the ratings. It has latest. Uh, if I go to movies here, and as you watch more content on your server, it's going to start suggesting more titles for you to watch, if that makes sense. So the more you feed it, the more you watch it the more you get out of it. It's going to become your own personal Netflix the more you watch your own content on your own server. And this is very nice. Like I'm, I'm going to go here to the fifth wave. And um, for those of you that I've seen um, my Ray Drive video where I mounted cloud storage to a dedicated server, then I used that mounted cloud storage I hooked it up to the server apps such as MB and Jellyfin or Plex, and then now you have content. The setup is very easy. All right, check. Uh, so check my cash app. All right, Tim. Hey, Tim, appreciate you, man. Hey, big shout out to Tim Wizard. Always been a supporter of my channel. Um. I think he's commenting on nearly every video that I put out and Tim's just always been a, a real supporter, you know, and Tim always kept it real with me. And, um, yeah, so big shout out to you, Tim. And Hey, uh, Hey, Jeff Rowe, if I didn't say hello to you earlier, what's up? So <clears throat> as you can see here, it has a nice cast and crew list chapters more like get this and this is what i mean by suggestions it's going to suggest you content for you to watch it does that off the back but the more you watch this it's going to suggest more and it's very nice as you guys see down below in the lower right hand corner i have a little over 3500 movies on this server and once again for YouTube practices, when you get your content, you can buy the DVDs, you can buy the Blu-rays, um, you know, you can have backups on your server, uh, which is what you see here. You, know, you can look at these as backups to your physical media for educational purposes. Once again, when it comes to getting content in different ways, if you have any questions, just email me and I'll point you in the right direction. Um, YouTube is no longer good for that stuff, but make sure you support the studios or if you have a favorite director, support your director. If he puts out good movies, go buy it. You know, it's, um, it, it's no shame in showing support, but I have to tell you, I have to tell you of these things because that's the right thing to do, <laughs> you know? So, Hey, it is what it is, huh? This is 1917. This was a a, a nice, solid, uh, very cinema. Um, the cinematography in this was crazy, and you see the clear logos over to the right. 
I mean, this interface with this presentation is just, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so here, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that um, incorrectly. Jellyfin is free. Now, I I'm going to tell you guys what I don't like about Jellyfin. Uh, I now, I'm going to open up Jellyfin now. I'm glad you brought that up. But yeah, but before I go into Jellyfin, um, once again, if you want to get premium service or your live TV, your IPTV, however you want to call it, into MP, and you happen to have a Roku laying around, you don't know what to do with it because it's limited, I can make it unlimited. This MB on the Roku has over two petabytes of storage that's mounted and it's growing. To me, there are no limits on this device because I control the device. If Roku locks it down, you find a solution to unlock it. That's how it's supposed to work. All right, so I'm going to go into Jellyfin now. <clears throat> okay, so this is my Jellyfin. So I got my movies and my shows on this one. Because I actually did this one first before I did my MB. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm going to go to one of my anime shows. See, now, now look at it. I wasn't trying to play it, but I uh, error record during playback. I I just don't get that. Okay, so here's the thing. With Jellyfin, um, if you are into foreign content like me, like I, I like to watch my Asian, my Japanese content, anime, they have subtitles. Jellyfin is not displaying the subtitles on the Android TVOS application. And I did two comparisons. I played Spirited Away. That had Japanese audio and subtitles. I played it on MB, right? It played beautifully on MB. Subtitles came up clear, instant. On Jellyfin, <laughs> it don't come up at all. And I, I can't understand it without subtitles. So this is one of the cons of it. Now, if you don't care for foreign content, by all means, Jellyfin is a beast. It's free, it's open source, but it's on a come up though. Still has some hiccups. Now, what I said earlier in the show about adding your premium service into MB, you can do the same thing inside Jellyfin as well. But here's the catch it's not stable. Some channels play, some channels don't. You're going to have to do a whole lot of testing to see if it's worth your time for my hustlers out there if you plan on reselling the roku because i just gave it up you can resell the roku i just told you what to do um if you plan on reselling this device my advice try out jellyfan and mb on your own and then see what works best for you now what works best for me might not work best for you but I'm telling you, in my testing, MB is a more solid product, even though it's closed source and it is locked behind the paywall. MB is a more solid of a product of the two. And you're going to have a better experience. You're going to have less phone calls with MB. You're going to have more phone calls with Jellyfan. Now, if you can make the premium service in Jellyfan work for you, by all means, go ahead. It's, it's free, open source. It's always continuing its development. What I'm saying is that you may have more headaches with Jellyfin, but explore your options. Do your research. Um, of course, I'm just letting you guys know the heads up. And with the options here, um, it's just not much. I can search. I can change my server. I can sign out. And then there is my profile. You don't have, um, where's my, thing is bugging out. Okay. Jellyfin was bugging out just now. Jeffro said to what? LOL. 
<laughs> oh man. So I, I'm gonna head to my movies here, and you see, it's it's similar to Envy because it, it's a fork of Envy, you know. And I'm not mad at that. I just want Jellyfin to step their game up. So they had their subtitles in order. Oh, and another thing, I noticed when I use Ray Drive to mount my cloud onto my local um, dedicated server. I was getting transcoding on movies that I wasn't even supposed to get transcoding on. Like, I, I got the equipment. I have um, just majority of my movies are 5.1 surround sound. I do have um, the equipment. I have a Vizio soundbar with the subwoofer with the uh, speakers to go with them. That's hooked up to my shield. Um, it is budget. I caught a, a real good sale on it, actually. And I just wanted to start off with it. But I was getting transcoding on things that I wasn't supposed to get transcoding on. But when I played the same file in Envy, I got direct play. And, and this and that could be a, a cloud thing, but it may be a server issue as well. Because the same file on Envy, direct play is fine. Now, uh, a workaround for direct playing Jellyfin content right now would be the K app. Under further investigation, Jellyfin for K and Jellycon, that's currently broken on K18.9. I don't know about Matrix. I'm not going to use Matrix probably until later on in the fall. I don't know. Just keep these things in mind. Um, when you're exploring your options and on the Roku app for Jellyfin, you see uh, the, the interface is bare bones. Um, it's not as pretty as Plex and MB, but it gets the job done. Uh, for some reason, this is being why well, is the audio change that to English? Jeez, there we go. It's just certain things like that you gotta watch out for, like just when you get certain content it can have multiple audios in the file you'll have to that's how you change your audio to what you want it to have you can put it as a watch you can add it as a favorite i can do that i can demonstrate that <clears throat> and if i go back to my movies hmm that's interesting is that something that the Roku version don't have. I'm going to back out and I'm going to go into it again. <clears throat> showing my next up. Showing my latest in TV show. That's fine. Hmm. Okay. It's not showing favorites. On the Roku. So that's one thing that, that is missing. Um, on the Android app. It does show your favorites. And it's almost identical in design. It's just a few things are stripped in, in the Roku version. Makes it more lightweight. But the ease of use is what I'm looking for. Um, that's fine. It just, I would have wanted the option there. If that makes sense. So this is another app that you can have on your Roku that um you can cut the cable cord with and this is your own meaning jellyfin or mb doesn't provide the content for you you go out there and get the content yourself so that's the key here now most of you have um, a premium service where you can access a playlist m3u whatever you can enter that in to mb and jellyfin and you can have an all-in-one solution on one budget device this is a nice device that not a lot of people are going to be talking about because maybe they haven't did enough research on the device or they haven't um, played enough with it. But trust me, it's very solid. Okay, Jeffro, how much is MB? MB Premier matches uh, the same price as Plus Pass monthly. 
it is five dollars a month you can pay by paypal or you can do by card i just got my monthly subscription for Embry premiere just today you know just to try it out you know to see what was the hype about and the first feature i tried was the live tv and the live tv does work it's more stable than jellyfin it just it just works so there's pros and cons to each of these um all i can say is that the days of the roku being limited those days are almost over it has came a long way from the past several years five years so um, you can get this budget device and, and run with it hey i mean um Matter of fact, I'll make a case that if you got the Roku first in 2021, I mean, uh, unless you want a backup to a backup, you wouldn't need to necessarily get an Android device to watch the same applications on unless you want a specific different application, such as the third party APKs or the K app, if that's what you're into. If you absolutely need the K app, then this device isn't for you. If you are willing to um, explore and look at the different options that's available on the platform, and if you want to watch the same content as you can on the K app, then you can do that. You can do that on this platform. I, and I, I got my Plex on here too. I'm about to load into my Plex. Um, Plex is a free application that you can um, use. That's available on Roku as well. Um, I have all of my server apps on the Roku. Uh, they work quite nicely. And you see the, the custom intro that you get on the Roku. I like that. So for the settings... Um, Yeah, so bro, Roku has never been limited, but it's the finding new ways to use it, which will create a headache for some, not all. Yeah, that's true. I was saying th the limitations of of the Roku because uh, in the past, that's what certain YouTubers or content creators, uh, that's what we were taught in the past about how you can't really jailbreak it. So to me, I found that to be a, a limitation that some people had, a, um, you know, that they had an issue with. But now it's <laughs> it's pretty much uh, open uh, as far as as far as um, I'm concerned, because of what you can do with it. It's closed and it's open at the same time. You can sneak. You can sneak around some some things. Um, this is the settings, remote control. Uh, I'm gonna do experience. I got my theme music set. You can leave these at default. Post play, auto play. I think that's default. Remember, it's like the tab. Uh, what you're gonna want here is to go into video. Now, there's been a lot of talk about the Roku quality. Guys, you have to go into the settings. Whenever you're dealing with Plex, make sure you go into the video settings. Um, your local quality to be set at original. This is to ensure that you're going to get your direct playing and that it's playing at it at its highest bit rate. Of course, your connection has to be decent. Remote quality, original, direct play. You can set this to auto. If you set this to um, force, it's going to not play certain content and it won't transcode. It just won't play it. <laughs> so set this to auto. Your best bet is at auto. Allow direct stream. That's important. For subtitles, I have only image formats for my foreign content such as anime. Have that set to that. All right. And then it's going to automatically assign you your H.264 level, depending on, um, you know, your equipment. So it's going to automatically assign that for you. Um, advanced. 
I have allowed and secure connections set to never. And then um, my server discovery, the GDM is checked so that when I automatically load it up the place app, it recognized my server and it automatically logged me into it without me doing anything. All right, so I'm going to back out of Plex. And yeah, Sharon said, I always, I have always broke the Roku. Oh yeah, I know, oh yeah, I know. Um, <clears throat> like, that new movie, uh, Without Remorse, you know, I can see that on this platform. You know, that's a possibility later on because I control everything. And yes, I have some other applications on here. Tubi, Prime Video, Funimation, Pluto, things like that. But as you can see, uh, you wouldn't even need this much channels. I just had these on just in case, you know, as other backups. You can you can narrow it down if you go on paid, mixed in with some free. You can narrow it down to YouTube. Just Retro Crush, Netflix, um, get you some TV in there, Pluto, Tubi, uh, get you one of these server apps, and you can call it a day. And, and that's your content right there. But the same thing you're watching on these other devices or, or boxes, you can watch on here too. Same thing. And it's real nice. So, um, oh yeah, J Mac. Like, uh, I, I have it plugged into my computer, and um, uh, this device is going to um take place of my Dynalink. I'm going to be streaming more off of the Roku while I'm on my computer, and then I have my main device, which is uh, my Shield, hooked up to my audio system. So that's separate. But this is cool for me to have on, on a separate monitor. And I just fire up OBS and um, I stream content. I got the sound and everything. So uh, very nice. It's responsive. And it, it's, it's just cool. I changed the theme and all that. It's uh, pretty solid. Go to settings. Um, go into theme here. Click into theme, go into theme packs. I have this jungle pack. I like this nautical theme pack the best though so far. Um, where's the Roku channel? Um, I took off the Roku channel, but the Roku channel is a big part of this device because it's the Roku channel. So I guess since Sharon brought that up, I guess I should show how to get that right. <laughs> oh man I knew somebody was going to ask about that alright so all you do to get the Roku channel is this you just type it in that's all it comes right up now this has some live TV in it and 24-7 live news I can add it Matter of fact, I'll do this. I'll add it. <clears throat> All right. And then we'll go to the uh, free plus premium TV. Okay. Okay. Go into it. Well, we can explore it. I mean, yeah, let's go into it. Why not? the Roku channel here all right hopefully it don't play anything off the back okay cool <laughs> so this is the Roku channel all right so this is recommended for me currently it got characters it does have a built-in live feature in it <clears throat> okay some classics here Stuff for family night, and it's it's constantly adding content to the application. So, 
um, is pretty cool in, in that regard. Um, crime dramas, suspense. So you know, um, you guys understand what what it offers. So they have options up top, and hopefully that don't. Okay, options did absolutely nothing. Just pressed it. Got to fix that one. <clears throat> but as you can see, um, the Roku is always going to have content. You're never going to run out of content to watch on this platform because it's all integrated into the platform. And with the ability and the flexibility of adding your own content, with one example being MB, you can transform this budget device and you can have the ultimate home theater experience on the cheap on the cheap and you know all the apps I've shown so far is going to work because there are legal free applications with um, pay options attached to them but when you click on something the streams are stable so on this platform, you are almost guaranteed stability, and uh, a lot of people are, are not talking about that. You're, you're guaranteed stability. You're guaranteed things to work. Um, Tim said you have Peppa Big recommended. Tim, some of this stuff is, is just random. Um, I've only watched YouTube and one anime, so. I don't know what type of background stuff is doing. Hey. <laughs> but uh, this is my core cutting lineup on the Roku. I got a total of 20 channels, thanks to Sharon. <laughs> I added the Roku channel to my lineup. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, that new movie came out today, uh, Without Remorse. Um, starring Michael B. Jordan, and I believe that's an Amazon Prime exclusive. I can watch that tonight on the Roku in 4K HDR. And if I hook this up to my uh, if I hook this up to my TV, you know, it's gonna have the proper sound to it. I mean, you can really get down with the Roku the same way you can get down with the Fire Stick. It's about options. If you guys have any questions, let me know about the Roku. Um, heck, about streaming. You know, uh, what you guys think. I didn't want to make this a super long stream. Because um, I have some content to watch myself. So... Y'all know how it go. Um, I'm curious uh, of anybody out there. Um, just what's everybody's sound setup? Just if you have the equipment, uh, what's everybody's sound setup? I mentioned earlier I have a Vizio. I have a 5.1 surround system currently, and I will be looking to upgrade later on in the year. I do believe I'm streaming video is a important part of it, but also the audio as well. I do like the audio. <clears throat> yeah. I like this 4K spotlight too. Because um, I can just go on here. Oh, dang. All right, Jeffro. 7.2.2 Den and Heart. All right. I see you. 4K spotlight is nice, and you can just come here to get content as well. I mean, you may not want to uh, watch content, <laughs> but it, it, it's going to give you, um, like for example, for Mortal Kombat, if you want to support, um, you know, the service, it is an HBO Max, and you can watch it in 4K. Now, we know as end users, there are other ways to get this in 4K. Um, I have this on my network through Nova 
video player and it played beautifully without a hiccup without a hiccup all right so bro all right cool nice real nice LG 5.1 hey, that's what's up you know um, I, I just got in I just got into the audio thing um, just about a month ago and um, man it has made me think uh, a lot about content like it's not just the video that audio has to be on point too and that's another thing that's why when I see um, a lot of these telegram groups where they be posting content inside the groups um it's cool and all but if, if, if it can't live up to my system i can't get down with it uh that's why i have a system in place to where it gets it and it's in a proper format for my system and i'm happy it works and um everything's good but yeah i just can't be grabbing those 800 meg files or one or two gigs, you know, those days are over. Um, you know, it just doesn't make sense now. It made sense maybe 10 years ago or five, but now you're going to have to up the file size because uh, those are going to have the better quality and it's going to have the proper sound that I need for me. Okay, can my own IPTV service play on, on this stick? Um, Michael, on this device, you can put any service into it as long as you as long as you can access a M3U. It also works with the HD Home Run as well. I don't have an HD Home Run, but it has different options that that you can explore with the Roku. The uh, Roku allows this. So let's take advantage of this while they allow it. Roku is allowing you guys to put premium service on on their device without smarters and you can sell them. You can make profit. It's like 50 on their website. Um, you charge a programming fee. You get them. You charge a client. $120 minimally because you're putting your service on there and then if they want their own content as far as their movies and TV shows like their VOD you charge them an extra fee because you're setting them up these are your clients so you set them up and the thing is that when you do set them up you know it's in full control I watch TV above a whisper yeah, we know, Sharon. We know. <laughs> Sharon, funny. Only for older shows. But yeah, but uh, uh, this device is, you know, as far as um, streaming or making money off of, this device is just as good. And the reason why is because I know exactly what to do with the device. Now, now every device is going to have different features to it that another one doesn't have but this budget device it can transform somebody home theater and then um, it can make it into a very um, interesting um, surround sound home theater experience if you put in the work you got to get the source you got to get your license and you apply the fundamentals and then if you know how to set up servers if you know how to get content how to hook your people up how to make sure that their network is in check this device is just as good as any other device what player to use for my m3u michael in the server applications they all use the exo player by default now the one good thing about Jellyfin I can say is that, well, at least on Android TV OS, because on here, I can't even change the player. On an Android version, you can make it to where you can use an external player. Funny, because it never worked for me. I used Nova, Cody, didn't work. Um, you can, they have VOC built in. 
if you're going to go the jelly fan route make sure you use VOC don't use EXO player when it comes to playing live TV because it's just not going to be a, a smooth experience as of the date of this video now if you go with MB you're going to get a much more solid product and the streams will come up and they play is it a perfect experience for uh, for TV no is it integrated is it an all-in-one solution yes can you make this work f for your community absolutely it just comes down to research it just comes down to research at the end of the day it's all research I can unplug my shield put it back in a box and stream off this and totally be fine because this has my content see I'm not using and you guys know uh, what the apps are um, j that we can't name anymore you know the B the C um, <laughs> the F <laughs> I don't need those because I have my content the way I control it I set up my server it's unique to me because I did the research I found the software I have it mounted I add the apps uh, this is right now what you're seeing is a hybrid between the cloud and local and it's on one device and it's only when you combine all of the elements is when you get the best possible product it's not one way or that way it's multiple ways and it's multiple steps included this is like it's it's multiple pieces to my server setup it's not just one thing it's not just me buying a piece of equipment putting a hard drive into it and calling that it day it's, it's a lot of working elements to this and it's all automated Let me go back to uh, to MB. <clears throat> yeah, this is the app. As you can see, I'm not going to go into a live TV because you know I don't want YouTube giving me no headaches and no problems. Put your premium service on MB, and you got your VOD right here. And I'll add my TV shows later. And another thing, when I scanned my uh mb for movies as soon as i press ok it loaded 3k movies instantly the only thing it was searching for was the metadata for jellyfin it took an hour and some change just to get 3k movies onto the server like it, it was doing it one by one i can make a case that mb is the fastest in terms of getting your content onto the server like I'm telling you, it was so quick. I literally pressed the button and I saw 3K uh, movies pop. I'm like, wait, what? And it, it's off the cloud. So you know it, it has to go through your network. It has to upload that stuff through your network. And, and I don't have the fastest upload speed. But the fact that I saw 3K movies, I mean, that's a damn good mount that I have using Ray Drive. If, if you haven't seen that video, just maybe Sharon can pull it up. Um, I have this unique solution to where you don't have to spend money constantly on hard drives. We're in a pandemic currently. Just because people are getting vaccinated and they're saying that you can not wear masks at certain times doesn't mean that it's going away overnight. We're still in a pandemic. You still need to think about how you spend your money. So what I did was instead of me going out and buying all these hard drives let me get one or two hard drives just for my movies and TV shows that I want to archive myself maybe that I have bought in the past or that I have gotten on DVD <laughs> you know what I mean and let's not get a bunch of hard drives because we have options now um, just how many favorite movies do you actually have do you honestly have 3K favorite movies? Do you have a thousand favorite movies? Most likely, no. You maybe have 50 favorite movies of all time, a hundred, maybe 120, 30, whatever. Put those on a drive. 
this setup here, everything else, I got it on the cloud. I don't care about it. I got my most prized possessions on my network. And I did a video about it. And I showed it. And all of this is on my network. And look at that. It, it, it brings up the clear logo. This is just beautiful. And this is all on a Roku. Matter of fact, uh, I should just retire the shield. Because I, I just proved... I just proved everybody wrong about the rope. I just retired the shield now. It's game over because I control it. Just playing. I'm not going to retire my shield because it has the audio. You know what I mean? And this does too. But look, as you can see, you can get down with this device and you control it. There's no, now, see, now there's no excuse now. To hear comments um, about what you can do with it and what you can't do with it. Because when it comes to your content, remember, this is your content we're talking about here. Okay, you can put it on a Roku. It's just a different way of, of going about it and viewing it, but it's the same content. And you control it. Meaning you put the M3U into the app. You set it up with your own server, with your own content. It could be content of just your family pictures or just private videos of your friends and family. It, don't, it doesn't have to be what I have here, but it's your own content is, is what I'm saying. <laughs> GoPro says start over. I just got here. Nah, I mean, I could give a recap. A brief one. But GoPro, um, did you know that you can put your live TV onto the Roku w without Smarters? Because I, I haven't heard nobody mention that before. Sharon says she's taking Shield donations. <laughs> hey, hey, Sharon, hey, but uh, were you you going to use that Shield, Miss? <laughs> you going to put some emulators on it? Man, I didn't hear it all, man. You know, the shield about it being a the shield truly is a multimedia device. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think if you're going to be streaming with the shield, I think you should get the audio equipment as well. If you're going to go to that level, um, I do think there needs to be a second uh peace involved if you're going to get the shield if, if you're just using the k app with one or three add-ons you don't need the nvidia shield I, you don't you don't but if you want to add more pieces to it like the audio the, the retro stuff maybe pc gaming then yeah okay but this is the Roku, and I'm telling you, on this budget device, which is like $50, you can watch the same content. What's up, J Mac? I'm taking donations for Pen Server. <laughs> this server is not available for YouTube. Uh, that's why I make videos to where I can show you guys different things so that. We're not just talking about the same stuff week in and week out. I'm, I'm, I'm coming up with different um, solutions for mid to advanced clients to take advantage of. Even beginners, if they're willing to learn the steps to where you have your, your cloud, your network, your local. You have all that, all that in one. And it's all working. It's all working the same. Tim said he's taking donations. Hey, I tell you what, hit my email up <laughs> with some MB questions, and um, I'll show you the get down for real. This is a real game changer because it's on a Roku, and I have it set up on my server on my network. 
on a Roku. In the past, we've heard people talk about get smarters. If you want to watch premium service, get smarters. No, smarters is cool. But what people have to realize is that Smarters is unstable on the Roku platform. Roku controls their platform 100%. Uh, it's their own operating system that they're running here. So you have to realize is that the Smarters can go up and down on a Roku. It's sometimes it can be up, sometimes it can be down. It's not stable. So if you're going to go that route for your clients, if you decide to resell this device, you're going to end up being disappointed. Disappointed. If you use my method, which I just showed you, which is MB, and for the actual background demonstration, you'll have to email me on how to set everything up. Obviously, thanks, Sharon, for putting my email out in the chat. There's my email right there. Email me. And I'm telling you, I can transform your Roku. I can take any Roku you have, whether it's five years old or newer, and I will make it into the ultimate stream machine just because I did my research. It all comes down to research at the end of the day, guys. Don't be fooled about what you read or about what you hear or what you see on YouTube. We have another option. It's the cheap option. And guess what? It has the foundation. It's backed up by the most popular streaming product of today. The brand, Roku. It's on uh, 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 quite a few TVs. Um, and it's real solid. You know that if you're going to this platform, you know you're going to have stability at the end of the day. Um, you don't have to worry about expanding storage. That's another thing. You don't have to expand storage on this device. I can put 500 channels on this thing and I cannot notice any significant slowdowns in terms of performance. Now, on some of these other devices, you may have to expand some storage. Can you put 500 applications on the Fire Stick without expanding storage? Oh, and um, my Cash App is currently working, Miss Itavia. Um, make sure you enter exactly what Sharon is saying in the chat. Now, I'm trusting Sharon is putting out the right info, which she always does. But sometimes mistakes can happen. Um, hey, what's up, Marcos? Let me see something. We're alive. Okay. Oh, day. Look out. <laughs> hey, hey, Tim. I ain't worried about that, man. It's all good. Um, that's all I try to do is come up with original content that I can put out to the community to where you guys can take advantage of. Um, I noticed that not too many people was talking about the Roku. So I said, you know what? I got this device two years ago. I did a dedicated video of it. And Sharon, if you could please post that in the chat, I appreciate it. Or Tim. I showed, I showed the device. Because once again, if I'm making a video about the device, I want to talk about the device. So I, I showed it off and I showed how to set it up. It's like a 20 minute video. Now I'm like, OK, let's look into MB Premiere because I never had it before. And I'm telling you, if I go to this live TV and I play a channel, it's going to play and it's all in one. I don't have to use I am player, my TV online, TV mate, smarters, um, whoever app rebrand. Nah, I, I can do it all in my one app. Hey, so bruh, hey, absolutely. <laughs> Difference is the Roku run as from a cloud based interface versus most Android boxes, devices have to install the APK absolutely right so 
Um, uh, let's expand on that. Uh, great, uh, great statement slash point. So, bro. So, somebody who's doing their research on what budget device to get. Because I'll always recommend somebody to start off low before they go up to the higher end devices. I, th I think that's pretty fair. Um, that's one thing you have to look into. If you pay the $50 with the Roku, um, you do know that you're getting a solid product. And you won't have to get any additional um, hard drives as far as the device. As far as the device goes, um, Sharon said, "What video are you speaking about?" Sorry, didn't hear it. Sharon, the video I am referring to is my Roku video that I have uploaded earlier this week. It goes through the setup where I do a quick unboxing and I show off the the interface. It's that video I'm talking about. So if you can please find that and put that in the chat, I will appreciate it. Thank you, sweetie. Um. Hey, uh, what's up, Latif? How you doing? <clears throat> Sorry if I miss you. Um, but yeah, but, but this is the app. This is the all-in-one solution that I'm talking about. MB. Now, if you go over to Jellyfin, just know that even though it's free and it's open source, you can run into some issues. All right. Let me see. Uh, th th like, and this is like integrated, so feature free. Um, it, it has endless content. Uh, the, the news is always on. That's live now. I mean, this is as sim as simplistic as it gets, but it's so powerful because the amount of content that um it recommends to you. It's crazy. And, and, and listen, and, and check this out. I dare all the hustlers or, or resellers out there to get a Roku. Now, if you want to go with my recommended setup, don't bother with Jellyfin as far as the, the live TV. Now, VOD for non-foreign content absolutely a beast don't need mb at all now if you want to get your hustle on for both the live and the vod listen up if you want the roku as an option you can have it as an option get you an mb license or set them up with, with an mb license but you have to get it first so that you can know what it does so that you can try it out for yourself Get your IPTV. If you are a main provider, get your M3U list. If you're not, if you're a reseller, get that list somehow. Uh, contact your people, get that list, and benefit. Put it into the server. Now, email me so that you can actually see how this actually works. And I, I, I'll, you know... I'll have to grab like some free M3. I mean, I, I can wing it, but I'm saying I'm not going to show my own personal credentials, of course. But if you know what I'm talking about, go contact your people. And if you have a Roku or if you was on the fence on the Roku, not only can you have this be your main device, you can actually make money with this as well. This just isn't something for yourself. This is something that can benefit you and your family. You just have to go about it in a different way. And it's all ran through one server, one app. I can delete all the channels on this thing. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to go here. For example, I could delete. Well, I'll keep YouTube because I don't download YouTube content. But all this other stuff, I can delete all these. And I can just have MB on here. And yes, you can cut the core with one app. On the Roku, you can cut the cord with this one app. To go into it again. What's up, Urban?
uh, yup, the higher end Roku devices, you can add external HD directly to the device. And yes, um, if you are interested in the higher end devices from Roku, um, you can absolutely do that. For, for people that's into the sticks or the dongles, they're on more of a budget. I'm telling you, you can't go wrong if you follow this method. You can't. Because it's, it's an all-in-one solution. You can't. And you don't need smarters to do it. And, it, hey, it is what it is. Well, we have another option available. Nice casting crew. Chapters, more like this. It's, I mean, uh, this can be your home theater setup. I understand that this platform doesn't have the K app, but this can be your home theater. Maybe the K app isn't for you because the K app is too daunting to a lot of beginners. Maybe if you have that first client that's not too tech savvy, maybe this is something you want to look into. It's okay to use different a different platform, a different operating system. Maybe this is something you may want to get them because it's very simple. As you can see, I mean, my 10 year old cousin can set up a Roku. I mean, maybe you might want to look into something like this to where if you know that they're tech savvy and they want something specific, then maybe a Roku isn't for them. But for the clients that are older, um, they're middle aged, they may not know what you know. Give them a different option. Just consider it. That's all I'm saying. Now, what you do is what you do. But I just told you how to benefit with this device. And that's all it comes down to at the end of the day. Um, it's, it's about knowledge. This game comes down to one thing. It comes down to knowledge. It is crucial. Without the knowledge, you can't do nothing. And this is why I can set up my channels the way because I, I can have a whole lot of options or I can have one option. Unless you run the K app off of an accessible internal server you own. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe there's a uh, some exclusive content that maybe an end user found with a specific add-on that they like on a certain device. I mean, there's different reasons as to why everybody um, gets into their own their own setup. But uh, I'm not going to hold you guys up. Um, I think I made my points quite clear. I'm going to be using this device on my computer. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to have it on the side and I I'm, I'm going to stream from it. Um, I like Retro Crush. I like that all the apps are user friendly. They're basic stripped down settings. They work. And I don't think. I, I'm not going to have too many issues with this device because I'm not dealing with the Android operating system. I'm dealing with something more simplistic, something more integrated, a friendlier ecosystem. Um, no clearing cash, no weird hiccups so far. Although if I do experience some, I will report those to my channel or in my Telegram group. It's just something that's very well planned out. It's, they have a vision with this. And their vision is simplicity. And I understand why the Roku is number one over the Fire Stick. Now I get it. And it's, 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 hey, now I get it. I mean, look what they're doing. Uh, they're having, they have this huge channel store that if you don't want to do the pay apps, you can do totally free. And you, you know what's crazy? I, uh, just, I don't even know how many free channels it is exactly in terms of the number count, but you can totally cut the cord with free applications. 
sometimes it's not all about pay. Sometimes the pay comes with you dropping the cable and then you investing in yourself and your internet speed as far as raising it up and your equipment. Sometimes the investment slash the pain comes with your internet. It's not necessarily the pay applications. You see, because pay can mean different things. Pay can just simply be you cutting the core and then you investing in your internet and then you just using free applications. Pay just uh, pay doesn't have to be I'm gonna get Hulu, I'm gonna get HBO Max, I'm gonna get Netflix, um, uh, um, or just I'm gonna pay for some live TV. It doesn't have to be that. It's different things here. It's levels to this. So Hill said, I'm going to use Roku on my projector. That's what's up. Latif said, I'm going to try it. Does it buffer? Um, Latif, all devices at a certain point in time is going to give you buffering. Um, just the other day on my Plex, I was buffering. Check the connection. Connection was solid. It was fine. You're going to experience buffering on every device, even on the Roku. Uh, it's just how it is in this game. Um, you can troubleshoot it. You know, there's general steps for troubleshooting buffering, but that could be a server issue. Uh, and, and that's the thing. Just buffering doesn't have to be a network issue. It can also be a server issue as well, where you don't have any control of that. Yeah. And um, and shout out to everybody that have, um came in the chat. <clears throat> and um, I just appreciate everybody for coming through. Hope um, I hope everybody learned something on this stream. Um, I, I certainly have. Well, uh, with the platform. Um, and and there's the movie right there without remorse. You can watch that 4K HDR. And um, I'm pretty sure it's going to look fantastic. <clears throat> so with that being said, I'm going to let you guys go because I have some content to watch. And I'm going to chill out and um, make sure you all check out that Without Remorse movie. I'm going to check it out. And um, I'm going to see how it is. And I'll catch you all later deuces and hit me up if you want to um become your own boss with the roku <laughs> y'all know how it is peace <laughs>